This video is brought to you by premiumbeat.com. All right, so we're gonna become micro managers in this video and talk about creating micro animations when it comes to working with very detailed objects inside of After Effects. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So this tutorial is phenomenal. If you're looking to really get in there nice and close and create really detailed animations. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how do we set up these objects for this type of animation. So we're able to do whatever we want and just really build something out that's awesome and looks really professional, detailed. And before we get in the video, I wanna say thank you to premiumbeat.com for sponsoring this video. Premium Beat is a royalty-free music provider for your creative video and motion graphic projects. They have an extremely popular library with thousands of songs to choose from, and they have a very easy in-depth search and menu filter system that allows you to quickly find the best songs for your video. So for your next video project, be sure to check out premiumbeat.com for your royalty-free music. All right, so here we are in After Effects, and we'll be doing this detailed animation here in After Effects. But before we can talk about animating any of these layers inside of After Effects, we have to talk about how do we organize this. And we'll be organizing this with Adobe Illustrator because the files we're working with are going to be vector files. And you can download this file for free. I will drop that link in the description so you can follow along uh, with this tutorial. And all the vector files that I work with are from freepix.com. And they're all free files that you can use, but you just have to credit the authors when you use these files. So we'll talk about breaking this down. And if you already know how to organize layers inside of Illustrator, just move forward to the After Effects portion of this video. All right, so we have our vector object right here inside of Adobe Illustrator. And for us to be able to have full control over the animation and make it easier for us to animate all this, we're gonna start grouping this together in specific layers. So you can see we only have about two layers in here, has this background turned off. But we come here to objects and you have a bunch of groups in here. So one thing you can keep in mind that this is only one layer. We don't have, you know, four or five, you know, different layers in here. We only have one. So what we need to be able to do is come down here to the bottom and click on new layer. And there's our next layer. So from here, we're going to start isolating objects and putting them into this layer and creating new layers. So for example, if I click the bike now, everything's grouped together. What we need to do is go to object and click on ungroup. And you might need to click it just a few times. And we'll see what we got. So now we're starting to get this group separately. Okay, so now I can click this bicycle wheel and we see that's highlighted right here in our layers panel because it's highlighted. So what we could do is simply grab this and bring it into our layer three. And we'll bring this layer three underneath our objects. And you see, bam, this is isolated into its own layer, meaning that we're gonna be able to animate this inside of After Effects, awesome. So then we'll wanna go ahead and create another layer and we'll go back into objects and we'll wanna grab our next wheel so here's our next wheel right here. We'll grab this layer and put it into layer four. Now it's in its own separate layer. We'll be able to animate that. Then we'll go ahead and create another layer and we'll start grabbing different objects. And here's a <clears throat> so, so maybe I'll grab, so I'll grab the seat of this bicycle and I'll bring this right into our layer. Bam. So now that's isolated. Awesome. And I'll bring this layer into our objects. Great. And then I'll go, then we'll create a new layer and I'll grab our basket of leaves here. And we'll continue to go through here and separate everything as we see need to. So obviously we won't be thinking about the animation, but there's some things that you're going to think about that can be recreated of After Effects that we can continue to animate. So for example, in this bike, there is this chain that will be able to continuously animate of After Effects. However, we don't have a continuous layer of this. So what I'm just going to do, I'm going to delete these and we're going to recreate it inside of After Effects. Um, and we'll just be able to continuously animate that when we're in there. So essentially I have everything that I want to animate into its own separate layers so everything's organized and I can animate all this inside of After Effects without being too unorganized. So when you're done, make sure you save your file and then we can import it over to After Effects. So how we want to import this inside of After Effects is we'll want to bring our file and just drag it into our project window. And it'll ask you how do you want to import it. You can do composition or footage. I'm just going to do uh, composition and we'll do layer size, click OK. And we can double click our composition here in the project window and here it is and we go to composition and click on composition settings and we can just set this to 1920 by 1080 okay and what we'll do here is go to layer new null object and we'll grab all these layers and we'll bring it to the null object and we'll go hit S our keyboard for scale and we'll scale everything up and then we can delete the null object. So the only problem we're gonna have when we scale this up is pixelization, but these, but this is a vector file, and this is why you animate with vector files. Is right here, there's this icon that's called continuously rasterize. You just check it on for all the layers. Oh wow, that looks sharp. So big difference, and you wanna be able to work with that. 
I'm actually gonna scale down our bike a little bit. All right, so we have all of our layers in here, nice and organized. And we'll start off with the wheels because they're the simplest animations to do. Come here and grab our right wheel, we'll hit R on keyboard for rotation, and we can rotate this, and you see, boom, we can start to animate this separately. So instead of adding keyframes, and I want this just to animate the entire time, we can all click the stopwatch and type in time, asterisk 200, and let's see what we got. Nice, that's a pretty you know decent animation right there. And we can copy this expression and we go to the second wheel and we can just paste that right in there. So now that our wheels are animating, we need to talk about bringing back the chain. And some elements are really easy to recreate. So for example, we can grab the pen tool, go to stroke and turn this on. Click on the word fill and set this to none, click OK. And from here, we can click a point there and just click a point over here to kind of bring that back there. Increase the stroke and we can set this color back to, you know, black okay then we'll come in here to uh, the contents go into shape one go to the stroke and we will hit the plus button and now we can decrease the number of dashes and then we come here to offset and we can click the stopwatch for offset and type in time asterisk 20 maybe we'll go do 200 we'll cool with that nice and then all we have to do from here is obviously do that again just go grab the pen tool and we'll do it from down here and bring this back here so now we have this animation in here, it looks great. And now we have to animate the foot pedal, and there's a lot that we can do. So we'll come here to our layer, which I call it cycle. And as you can see, we're not gonna be able to directly animate this because it's still in one group. So what we can do is right click this layer, go to create, and click on create shapes from vector layer. So now this is in its own layer, we'll go to contents, and you can see that we have multiple groups in here. So just like Illustrator, we're able to animate these separately. But you know, setting up an Illustrator was a lot more uh, it was a little bit easier to have this all organized. So you can see that this is the thing that we want to animate right here, the pedal. So what we'll do is click on contents, go to add, and we'll create a new group. And we'll put both of those groups into the new group, group five. And then we'll open group five. And then we'll grab the pan behind tool. And you see that the anchor point's a little bit smaller here. It's right there. And we'll bring this to right there. Then we can open up group five, go into transform group five, and I'll click the stopwatch for rotation. And we'll do time, asterisk, and we'll do uh, maybe, you know, 500. That's cool. So let's go ahead and figure out what other animation we can do before we animate the entire bike on. We're always looking for small things to animate. So perhaps we can animate the seat here. So we can grab this layer and we can appear on keyboard for position and add a keyframe for this. And what we'll do here is we'll bounce it up and down. You know, I think this is a good little opportunity just to have some repetitive back and forth animation. Copy these keyframes and just move over by 12 frames and we'll do that every you know 12 frames there so this will constantly be bouncing up and down and i think that's cool and maybe we'll come here to the handle and we'll hit r on keyboard for rotation and let's rotate this and you see that we're gonna have to move this anchor point so we'll come here and grab the pan behind tool and we'll put that anchor point right at the base of the you know the bike right and then we'll just come here on all click the stopwatch and we'll type in wiggle open parenthesis 2 comma 40 close parenthesis and now we get this animation here and that looks you know looks good so what else can we animate maybe we can animate our basket of flowers now i'm not going to go in here and animate every single flower because we can right click this and click on create and create shapes from vector layer however you know there's about 60 shape layer layers in here and i don't want to go through that so what we'll just do here is we'll come here to the top and we'll grab the puppet pin tool and we'll make sure our basket layer is selected and we'll just start adding some points in here. So maybe three at this base here, uh, three at this base here, and we'll go to like every flower here. And once we have our three points on the base, we come here to the top and we can start like moving this a little bit. So let's go ahead and move forward in our timeline. And we can add a point for every flower that we want to animate. I'll just do these you know, essential ones. And simply what we can do is when we're forward in our timeline, we can just kind of move these over a little bit and we'll move forward and we'll continue just to kind of animate these back and forth. So this way we'll have a nice little, you know, repetitive animation. So as you can see, if I scrub through this, we kind of have a nice animation here and we'll just kind of finish this off. So actually what we could just do to save some time is we'll just copy these keyframes here and we'll come here, paste them in there. So now we'll have this repetitive animation and it's a little bit of story, but if you move out here, it's a little bit harder to notice. So, you know, I think it's really nice just to have that little bit extra animation in there and 
you know, goes a long way. So now that we have the essential animation of what we can do, let's talk about just animating this in all one by one. So there's a handful of different ways we can do this, but I like to just build this out from the top to bottom. So we're just gonna do position animations here. And the only one that we have position keyframes here is our seat layer. So just to save time, we'll go up to uh, layer new null object and we'll just parent the seat to the null object and we'll lock our seat layer. So then we'll grab all of our layers and we'll hit PR and keyboard for position and we'll add a keyframe for these. And we'll move them forward in time and we'll just bring the entire bike object down, you know, right below our composition. So right out of frame and then all these will just come on. Now what we could do here is obviously offset each of these layers in time so you know the left wheel could pop up first and then we can select the right wheel bring that on uh, then perhaps we can bring on the uh, the actual frame of the bicycle so we'll go ahead and move forward even more so when it's all said and done we should have this animation very similar to this and our bike is to build up and we have all that pre-made animation in there and that looks really cool and of course make all your last keyframes easy ease keyframes I forgot to do that so be sure to make all your last ones easy ease this way the animation slows down when it comes in and that looks really nice so easy ease is F9 on your keyboard and then when you're done make sure to turn on motion blur for all your layers and one tool that I really like using to help save time on animation is called Animation Composer which has 1000 motion presets that allow you to easily apply animation presets to any object inside of After Effects and it comes with its own user interface. So for example, I can come here to our Transitions presets, go into our preset folders and find something under maybe Position and I can preview the animation before applying anything. So maybe that's not what I want. I want to go into Position Rotation. And then I can come here to the drop down menu and say what direction I want it to come in. So maybe I want it from the bottom. When I find the animation that I want, I want to make sure that all of our layers are selected and set it to apply as in. And I'll apply to every layer that I have selected. So you see the entire bike comes on and I can always stretch out the animation by going in transition markers and moving this over by a little bit. You can see that the markers move over in the timeline. And I also can come here to stagger and I can stagger each of these layers by five frames or whatever I want and click on do so in about 30 seconds to a minute i've been able to animate this entire thing and with a very nice unique animation style and i only use one preset so you can use multiple presets and a whole bunch of other ones so if you want to check out animation composer and all 1000 motion presets i will drop that link in the description and there's also a pack for 1000 text motion presets as well there's also a 1000 text preset pack for animation composer and also a 3d motion preset pack as well so if you want to show any packs for animation composer those links will be in the description and as you can see doing micro animations is really easy to do it's a lot of fun and you know hopefully there's a lot to take away from this video and remember if you're looking to save time be sure to check out animation composer because you know if the animation is already done you guess what you can save hours of time per project so check that out if you're interested and if you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up my social media networks. Those links are in the video description. And always, be creating.